Guten Morgen, meine Freunde, und willkommen to the good old days. This week we're gazing at the dying embers of disco, waiting for the new wave and waving goodbye to punk rock. The week is the week ending June 11, 1979. At number 10 after three months on the charts and a peak of seven are the Pointer Sisters with Fire, a song which it sounds like it took noted dimwit and drunk driver Bruce Springsteen a full 10 minutes to write. Of course, it's rescued by a sly, smoky performance from the girls and Richard Perry's cool and smooth production, a world away from the kind of Hackworth the East Street Band and Springsteen as ever sounding like a horse who bet on himself and lost, would have churned out. Number nine is the runt of this week's litter as Paul McCartney guides wings to an ill-advised stab at disco two years too late with the thoroughly abysmal good night tonight. Once again, the banalities to which the man who once wrote Got to Get You Into My Life can sink, mystify and infuriate. Number eight is Dream Lover, a solo effort for the mums and dads by Little River Band's Glenn Shorrock. Which was appropriate seeing Little River Band's initial volley of brilliant singles had faded and they were positioning themselves as AOR kingpins in the States. Pleasant enough in its own way, Dream Lover is of course written by the great Bobby Darren, a name that seems to be popping up in these quarters with ever more rampant regularity. Dropping down the charts at seven is the one-hit wonder Promises' Baby It's You with its chorus of Blue Flame Intensity, which maxed out at number two back in April, then yo-yoed in and out of the top five for a month. A lot of people conflate Promises and the Babies. If you're ever confused, Promises is soft rock and the Babies are yacht rock. There's a world of difference, apparently. Number six is a record that anyone of a certain age who listened to pop music of the Concordant era, particularly those of us who were hormonal young boys, will have indelibly stamped on their brain. And that invokes the image of Debbie Harry in a sheer grey dress, purring out Heart of Glass. Still in the top 10 after five weeks at number one, the 115th biggest hit of the physical era in this part of the world, it's a record that goes beyond its time, is a guaranteed dance floor filler to this very day, and stands as one of the essential pillars of any late 70s mixtape. Buckle up your belts, Lash down the terraplane and fix your toupees right. There's wonderation and contrariness, tarnation and eudaimonia are plenty in this week's five fun fast facts. The big come up this week was Roger Viduris's Get Used to It, which was up 30 places to number 39, largely on the back of 13 year old girls seeing him on Countdown the week before. Viduris was an Andy Gibb light, not a bad singer by any means, but he sounds more like a rock singer than the bopping popster he's selling with this song, who'll always be remembered for his good looks, hence the 13-year-old girls buying records, Cartier tank watch, unconvincing dance moves, and redder than red sweater. The biggest plummeter this week is the band that everyone thinks promises were, Two hit wonders, The Babies, with their excellent Every Time I Think of You, down 16 to 35 after a peak of number six, which seems unfairly low. Interesting new entries this week include Boogie Wonderland by Earth, Wind and Fire and Shine a Little Love by ELO, both which would go on to be ginormous hits. Number one in the USA this week with the Bee Gees, spending a lone week at the top with Love You Inside and Out, before Donna Summer annihilated them with hot stuff. In the jolly old UK, it was Sunday Girl by Blondie, which was the B-side of Heart of Glass in Australia. At number five, picking out this week was one of the last dying embers of disco, Gloria Gaynor's I Will Survive. Already sounding a bit tired and frayed at the cuffs in 1979, its current enshrinement as a Mardi Gras camp sing-along has meant it remains imposed on the cultural conversation and is unlikely to be removed anytime soon. Musically, it's an interesting song, built in an ominous A minor and peppered with novel chords such as major sevenths, a killer E sus4 and a, and a baffling sort of B minor dearly which really tests Gaynor's voice at made you leave that key and hurt me with goodbye. But the record just sounds out of date and is not due for re-recording but recontextualization. Number four is one of those records where the singer is far more interesting than the song. 
which is the love's theme from Prisoner. Prisoner was a soap opera which debuted in 1979 and was set in a women's prison, which isn't as sexy as it sounded. They made 692 episodes of this extremely cheap show in a mere seven years, seeing it serve for those seven years as a haven for really bad actors, and I'm sure some people who just turned up on the set and claimed to be actors, as well as established but slightly past their prime actors who were slumming it in order to make that month's car payment. Oh, but it's not the really interesting thing. The singer, Lynn Hamilton, was a veteran who toured with The Who, The Rolling Stones, Jimi Hendrix, The Animals, and was on first-name terms with all the Beatles. She's emigrated to Australia in the early 70s and become a high-powered businesswoman before getting into the God racket in the late 1970s. She claims God gave her this hit record so she could go out and tour and find an audience to preach to. God so far hasn't confirmed this. Imagine being down your local beer and rubber chicken club hoping to hear some soothing wuss rock. Wuss rock is softer than soft rock and I totally made that term up. And stories about monkey shines with Moon the Loon and instead hearing evangelical proselytising between the medley of 19th Nervous Breakdown, The Acid Queen and We Gotta Get Out of This Place. None of this actually happened, I just got bored and went off on a bit of a tear there. But these days, one hit wonder Lynn is indeed a big wig in the Jesus biz with her own church based on the Gold Coast and I'm most likely going to hell for this. Be seeing you. My goodness, didn't we cling tight to the dusty peak lapels of disco as the 70s crumbled away. Truth be told, records like this are kind of an evolutionary step away from disco towards the house sounds that would come out of Chicago in the next few years. Stewart is a talented and energetic performer who had a long and varied career as a singer and an actress, and nowadays is a UNICEF ambassador and longtime resident of Italy. The penultimate entry this week is Lenny Lovitch's delightful new wave bellwether lucky number. Said to be a major justification in John Lennon's mind as to the reason the world was ready to hear the vocal stylings of Yoko Ono again. Quirky, kooky, and several other adjectives I ordinarily hate to use, this was an absolute breath of fresh air on the charts. In a week where half the top 10 was made up by one hit wonders, Lena Lovitch may just have had the best record of all of them. It never made number one, spending three weeks trapped at number two, a most undeserved point of notoriety. So I imagine you're all appropriately mystified as to the record that presumes the authority to claim chart supremacy over this collection of great stories and at times not so great records. All will be revealed as soon as Gene plays us in. Do your thing, Gene. It's Lay Your Love On Me by Racy. There are a few things you can tell about this record just by looking at it. It's on Rack Records and it's produced by Mickey Most and written by Nicky Chin and Mike Chapman. Mickey, Nicky and Mike. Chapman having produced the previous number one, Heart of Glass. What this immediately tells us is the record is most likely to have that patent RAK record stomp, which it does in spades, and that brightly, slightly sped up mix that pushed out hits in the UK and Australia in a seemingly endless stream, which it does. It's sort of a guitar light glam rock, built on a familiar chassis but less top heavy. As Herr Levi would say, it's a French lasagna. You know what it is at heart, even if the dressings on top are different. A guacamole kebab. It's a banal song though, relying on a cheesy riff to create a party atmosphere, sped up to pump the excitement around a skillfully crafted chorus. But at around the 100 second mark, you've really heard all the song has to say. It's just turn around and repeat from that point and it becomes rather tedious. That said, the song spent eight weeks at number one to finally be deposed in mid-July by the song at number 11 in this week's chart, Donna Summer's terrific hot stuff. Racy did then reclaim the number one spot in the first week of August with Some Girls, Lay Your Love On Me was still in the top ten by that point, deposing pop music by M and it held on to number one for four weeks. Their next single, Boy Oh Boy, didn't make the top ten and Racy Mania was over. And there we have it. One Shot Deals, Legends in Painful Decline, an epic number one, and a bit of a void as there was no dominating trend or style for the charts to follow. It was an era of transition in which anyone, it seemed, could be a top 40 star as long as they stepped up and tried to fill that void. 
It echoed the past, pre-Beatles, in a land where the past was already a foreign country.